First and foremost, uh, I want to say thanks to Kent State for coming down and playing us. Um, you know, when we scheduled this game uh, last April, um, it's a tricky game. You know, uh, Kent State's a really good program. You know, I saw a stat today. I think they're or Xavier and Kent State are one of maybe eight programs in the entire country um, that haven't had a losing season since 2000. And uh, Coach Senderoff does a tremendous job. I mean, he's a great coach. Uh, he's one of my closest friends here in, in the business. Uh, I talk to him almost at least a couple times a week. Um, so this game was, meant, meant a lot to us, a lot to me. But again, have a high, high, high level of respect for Kent State. They're going to win a lot of games. They're going to win a lot of games. Um, I thought we got off to a little bit of a rough start, but where I'm most proud about our group was we were unflappable. We stayed the course the entire game, never flinched. They went on a run early. They made a couple tough shots. We stayed with it. We made a couple adjustments with our ball screen defense, which I thought really helped. Uh, you, know, you look at the stat sheet and you're going to say, well, hey, you know, Deontay Miles, I think, played 23 or 24 minutes. He only finished with, I don't even know if he scored. I don't think he scored, but he had three rebounds. But I'm going to tell you, he really, really impacted the game in a big way on the defensive end. Just with his size, his length, his mobility, he was able to switch ball screens, which I thought really changed the game towards the end of the first half. We obviously turned the ball over. We were really sloppy there in the first half and give Kent State a lot of credit. I think we had 13 turnovers at halftime. We only finished with 16 turnovers on the game. Obviously, it's, we, we got to take care of the ball a heck of a lot better. Um, you know, they, they were able to get out and transition in the first half, and I thought that really hurt us. I, we tried to control the possessions a little bit more in the second half. We ran a lot more set plays, uh, longer possessions. We were able to get the ball into the post to Jack Nungy, uh, who was tremendous. Deontay Miles, drive the ball. I thought we played more paintball in the second half, which really helped us as well. And then we had 20 offensive rebounds, which I was really proud of. Uh, our guys were relentless, six by Colby and five by Jerome. So it was an overall team effort. Listen, and I keep on saying this, because we had some guys maybe not play as well tonight or maybe not play as much. It's going to be different guys, different nights. We have a lot of great players on our team, a lot of great players. And all those guys in that locker room are committed to winning. They understand it takes a level of sacrifice. Uh, we're just coming, obviously, off of Veterans Day uh, yesterday. And uh, we, ta we talked at length about that with our group, about what sacrifice really means. So I'm uh, proud of our group. Uh, we're off tomorrow, and then we'll kind of reset the button here and, and get ready for Ohio State. You mentioned the adjustments that you made on ball screens. Can you walk us through that specifically, what you guys did differently and how you think it impacted the game? Yeah, I thought early, Adam, they were, they were getting us spread out too much. You know, Sincere Carey is a tremendous guard, right? He transferred in from Duquesne. He was dominating the game early. I mean, dominating. Um, and we were just getting too spread out. So we were hard hedging, you know, it, so we were putting two guys on the ball. And then we'd get too spread out and rotation and stuff. And so we decided to do it with Deontay. We started switching with Deontay, you know, every ball screen. And it allowed us to keep our defense really tight. And Deontay's unique. I mean, he's got a gift. I, I've said this before. I think he could be the best defensive player in our league. There's not many 6'11 guys who can keep a really good guard like Sincere Carey in front. Very, very few. It's very unique. And Deontay has allowed us to do that. And then Jack... Jack maybe doesn't have the lateral quickness that a guy Deontay has, but what we started doing with him, we kept him more in the paint on every ball screen uh, just to kind of use his size and length around the rim. I think he finished with a couple block shots as well, but it allowed us to keep our defense a heck of a lot tighter. I'd imagine that's got to feel pretty good when one of the things you talked about after the Niagara game was that you guys were unable to make those in-game adjustments related to your ball screen defense, and tonight you were able to. Yeah, it was much better. You know, listen, you know, night one's night one. You know, it's, it, I think there were some jitters. And, and, and again, listen, I, you just got to stay the course. Like I said in the post game last, last time, listen, it's, it's a marathon. And you can never get too high or too low, right? Nothing's ever as good as it seems. Nothing is ever as bad as it seems. It's somewhere in between. And, but I think we're getting better. We've grown up a little bit. We got to continue to grow here over the next week leading into Ohio State. What did you tell your guys at halftime and what about that conversation? Did any of it lead you to believe that, that you would see what you saw in the second half? I knew, you know, Scruggs, um, just his voice, his leadership. You know, it's funny, like when I walk back, our, our coach's locker room is a little bit past um, our player's locker room. So you can hear uh, kind of what's being said a little bit in our player's locker room. And, you know, I've been, obviously, I've coached, we've, I've coached several games here at Xavier as an assistant as an ops guy, as head coach. And there's sometimes where those, those 
locker rooms are pretty dang quiet, right? And there's sometimes, I hope most of the times, so hopefully they're, they're loud. Guys are talking to one another. Guys are connected. Guys are talking about what happened there in the first half, motivating each other, sticking together. You know, I, I'd never forget, I turned that corner to head down to the, to the coach's locker room to go talk, meet with our staff first before we uh, talked with our players. And, uh, man, you could hear Paul's voice. You know, and again, I, again he's, he's doing a great job of leading this group. Another thing that you mentioned was you were a little bit more deliberate in the second half offensively. You wanted to play paintball. Um, you guys, you could really tell that you made an effort to feed the low post and sort of play around that. Do you, I know that was the goal all along, but do you feel like you figured something out in terms of your offense in that second half that you can build on going forward? Yeah. You know, I think uh, you know, Jack, uh, Nunji specific, he gives us a skilled dude down there. I mean, he, he can think, he's poised, he can really pass, he can score. We have to utilize that, right? And he's only practiced really for a couple of weeks here. You know, so we're trying to figure him out kind of on the fly here. It's not like we've had, um, you know, him, him go full go here for the last four months. You know, but again, he can really impact our team. we got to throw the ball inside. And, and just, I think, slowing down our team a little bit and running longer set plays really helps our guys and it helps get the ball reversed. And then inside, whether that's a drive for a guy like Scruggs or, or AK or whoever it is, and then Jack Nungy. And I thought our guys really shared the ball and made the right plays once we did get the ball to the paint. In the offseason, you talked about you guys built your schedule the way you did because you felt like your team could really handle it. I was wondering if you could kind of speak a little bit on playing a veteran team like that so early in the season, how big that is for your guys as they're still coming together and working together to kind of be, be, be the full complete project. Yeah, you know, I, first off, I want to say this too. I should have said this probably in the uh, to start the start the press conference here. The MAC has some great teams. You've seen uh, my, my brother's a head coach at Akron. They they lost by one shot at the buzzer there against Ohio State. I think Miami of Ohio went down to Georgia Tech, beat Georgia Tech. Um, Kent State, they're going to win a lot of games, right? I mean, Buffalo's a really good team. Uh, there's some great teams in that league. So if you look at the numbers, it's like they're, they're kind of scary games though. Right, I mean, because this is a big game for them. They're going to be really up to play us, and and uh, you got to get your guys motivated and ready and understand how good they are, because they're really tough and really well coached, and they got some dang good players. Um, but like you said, I mean, it's a scary game, right? And but it's also a game that can really help you down the road, because like Kent State's going to win a lot of games. And I kind of asked Kobe and Paul about this. Kind of want to get your thoughts as his coach. Uh, we've really seen Adam take this big step forward as a playmaker for you guys. For you, how fun has that been to see what he's done in those, in those levels of the game? Yeah, AK is a uh, – he, he, he's a player that needs freedom, right, on the floor because he's very creative. He can get his own shot, um, but he makes guys better. So I keep on telling him, like, listen, I know you, he didn't shoot the ball well tonight, but he can really shoot the ball um, and score it, but use his IQ. He knows how to play. He was really well coached over at Cooper uh, by Tim Sullivan, who's a great coach. Um, they had a lot of success there, and those guys know how to play, and, and he, he knows how to play. You know, we need him to use his IQ and make guys better. Uh, I thought he was in a really good rhythm tonight. Your first possession in the second half, Jerome had three offensive rebounds, how, and then he finished with the layup, and then guys tied it up on the next possession. How important was that to establish the tone coming out of the locker room? Everything. You know, going into this game, you know, Kent State, kind of the themes for us were, you know, they kind of try to bully you. You know, they're strong, they're big, they have high major size. I mean, they're long, they're tough, they're going to try to out-rebound you, try to make every catch tough on the, on the, on the other end. Um, they're going to try to take your ball. And to set the tone on the glass like that to start the second half was huge. You know, we made a big point of emphasis that going into the game, and obviously we, we finished with 20 offensive rebounds, and we out-rebounded them 48 to 29. To sort of continue on that thread, um, can you explain what it is? You know, there's this interesting thing that happens sometimes when you guys are rebounding where Colby Jones has the timing, and he's only six foot six, but you notice him above some of those bigger guys. And I'm wondering what that is, what allows him to be in the right place at the right time and to be able to go get those rebounds over guys who are substantially bigger than him. You know, number one, he's gotten more athletic, Adam. You know, I give Chase Campbell, our strength coach, a lot of credit. He's done a great job with Colby. Um, but Colby's always had a knack for rebounding. I always say the, the one stat <clears throat> that always translates over from high school to college is rebounding. 
I think he averaged like almost 10 rebounds a game in the Nike EYBL, right? And so that translates over. He's going to rebound really, really well. He's got a nose for the ball. He's got an understanding of kind of where the ball kind of goes. He can kind of anticipate it. He sees it, you know, really, really well. Scoring doesn't always translate, like, right? Every, every one of our guys were leading scores in, in high school and in AAU, all that stuff. That doesn't always translate over to the collegiate level, but rebounding does. And he's a tremendous rebounder on both ends of the floor. And – you know, one of those guys who, who didn't play very much tonight that I know that you're expecting a lot out of this year is Dwan. What's that conversation like? How do you sort of get him back on track after two, two poor games to start the season? Yeah, listen, I believe in Dwan. Dwan's a really good player. Like I said in, in, at the beginning in the opening statement, we got great players. It's going to be different guys, different nights. It's going to be different guys, different nights. That's, that's, that's the, uh, the advantage we have with depth, right? So he'll be better. He's, he's a great player. And it, it looks like, did, did you change after the game? No. I, no? No. Well, your guys said that they, they gave you a birthday present back yeah. in there. What was that like? A lot of water. <laughs> a lot of water was thrown on me. I got these khaki pants still on, so, um, yeah, I'm still soaked. I don't know if you could hear it, but the, the student section was singing happy birthday to you at the end of the game. I there. did not know that. Well, I, listen, our student section has been un believable right they're like uh, caged animals that have been haven't been able to come to games in a while so I mean they have been incredible what an atmosphere again I want to make sure I say thanks to all, all the uh, all the all the students and all the fans that were here tonight uh, I think they scored nine points in the last 12 minutes it seemed like Scruggs was matched up against Carey a lot more was that was that, yeah. that that was the plan I take it yeah he took the challenge like Paul's playing great offense I thought he was really good defensively uh, just his size length um, his toughness uh, was tremendous and I thought obviously Deontay's ball screen defense yeah. and Jack Nungy Jack did a great job in what we call drop coverage that where he kind of stays back in the paint both those guys did a tremendous job do you back off that Scruggs matchup with the point guard because he does so much offensively? Uh, is that too much to put on his plate? No, he can handle it, Andy. He's, a, uh, he's an all-American level player, and we need him to be that, and we're going to ask a lot of him on both ends. Does it mean anything that, uh, that you made more free throws than they attempted? Huge. The it's game? one of our goals, right? So I have this, I have this sheet that I, that I fill out every game after you know, the night of the game when I watch the film, and, and, and one of our goals offensively is, is to make more free throws than our opponent attempts. In order to do that, we've got to get the ball to the paint, right? Drives, post-ups, offensive rebounds. We've got to be the tougher team around the paint. Uh, do you have the deflection stat, or do you have to go through the uh, – <clears throat> You know what, you in the near, midst – Were you near 35? Andy, in the midst of, of me getting soaked, my, my papers, I had all my stats, right? <laughs> and I had a bunch of stuff written down on it. It's gone. So I, I'll have to count those tonight, so apologize. <laughs> Don't stay up too late. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys.